Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm starting end zone of a world apart. This is another city building strategy game. I I just noticed on GOG and I looked at it and I said, "Whoa, this game has Fallout vibes, but in a strategic uh, sense of the way." So I would always uh, want it to do a Fallout game, which is uh, more more strategy and not uh, focused on one or a couple of characters. But rather than building a base, maybe increase your influence over the wasteland. And this game might fit the bill. Also, I play uh, other strategy games or more precisely city builder games. I put a, a link up in the corner and you can go check out those out but now uh, let's dive into it this is the first time i'm playing so i don't know anything about it i don't even watch videos but i made a mistake because i wanted to test the recordings i started the game and there was an intro which i skipped and now that intro is not starting again i hope we will see it when we click on the new game but what I see there, it was like like a vault inside a vault. So that also gave me Fallout vibes. And I don't know how good is this game is, but uh, I see they already made a second one. So it should be good. It should be good. Also, uh, any comments are welcome, which help me how to do things here. But if there's a story, please don't spoil it for me. Also keep in mind uh, that I like to release videos uh, in every week. And for that, I have to pre-record stuff. So if you comment on something, uh, I might be uh, two videos forward at that point. Just keep in mind. Anyways, let's try this out. Oh! So it looks like uh, scenarios play an utility that teaches you all the important aspects of the game or because become familiar with certain parts of the game. Okay, so it's more like uh, Frostpunk. So we have a few scenarios, survivor mode and the tutorial. So let's start with the tutorial, of course. A longer uh, interrelated tutorial that includes all important. Okay. Okay, we have a bunch of tutorials here to go through it. Oh, we will have raiders. Okay, let's start this one. Oh, we have livestock. We can hunt. We finally left the end zone. Just look at this beautiful scenery. It's marvelous. Even though it's a bit different from what we had pictured, we were able to secure a few basic resources and are storing them in our bus. Oh, it's voice acted. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm glad we prepared ourselves well for this kind of scenario. Especially since our inventories in the end zone ran low. Don't forget that if you need additional information, you can look at our survival guide at any time. Okay, this is the most important thing I learned from Frostpunk. Pause the game. I don't know how serious this will be. Okay, we have a lot of stuff around the map. Whoa! Interesting location. Indeed, it is an interesting location. Ah, and this is just randomly here. It would be cool if we could find another one around here. So where the electric line has run. Okay, we have to open the survivor guide. That's the first thing to do. And there is water. 
I bet that's an important thing. Basically, water, food, shelter. That's what we need. Okay. That's the survivor gun. All right. Well done. Everything you need to know should be right here. I think the time has come for us to at last build ourselves a new home here. Before we can construct buildings at all, we have to assign the profession builder to several settlers so that they can take care of construction contracts. In general, it's your responsibility to decide which tasks are important and how our settlers are supposed to be distributed to attend to them. Okay, it's... Uh, I, I've got the Frostpunk feelings. Now, but that assigns settlers to professional builder. Okay, how can I assign them? Ah. All right. Your builders will be ready as soon as construction contracts have been issued. It's time to start focusing on our key and most basic need, water. The first thing we ought to do is to establish a working water supply. So we'll move on to our first construction contract. Place and build a jetty by a lake in the vicinity of your town center. Okay. Build menu. Oh, that's a jetty. All right. And this is how I build it. Looks like. Oh. Okay. We have a We have a couple of buildings here. Oh, nothing is happening because I paused the game. All right. Okay, so these guys are moving there and we have wood, scrap, we need tools, radiation protection, interesting, medication, cloth, metal, plastic, electronics, and coal. Oh yes, the coal. Are there any children here? To solve the coal problem. And do we have... Yeah, we have scrap as a resource. Okay, how about we can do thing a little Very bit? Good. The jetty was completed as planned. Now we have a place where we can collect water. There are other possibilities to gather water too. But the jetty is the simplest and most cost-effective method. We can obtain and store water from different sources, like a jetty, rain collector, or well in the cistern. The cistern should always be in close proximity to a water source, so that our water carriers don't have to walk too far. Okay. So, there's a build menu, water. Turn. And let's build it here. I wonder what's this green stuff. Well, let's 
let's do like this. If we have to build roads, I don't know if we have to build roads. I don't see any roads here. Logistics. Ah, there's the road. Okay. So we have to build roads. And the green stuff is probably where we should connect the roads. And we have adults. And we have children. Okay, so they will be mining coal. Go a little bit quicker. Weekly contamin contaminated rain. Nice. Okay, so radiation is a thing. Now we have to assign workers here. Three. Uh huh. I see. They're going there and they will fill this with water and knowledge, rich food, average health, average radiation on all settlers. Confidence. We have confidence here, not hope. Population growth. Okay, so we need to produce a hundred water. Ah, yes, there's the water and food. And where can I can I check? I cannot check uh, how much we consume per day, or maybe it's uh, uh, season. Well, I guess we will find out. Now, let's collect that water. Great. We have now installed a working water supply, and water is now transported from the jetty to our cistern. Consider hiring more water carriers if you don't have enough settlers available. You can never have enough water in storage. Okay, we should remember that. Now we should focus on food production. It's important to ensure the supply right from the start. A gatherer's cabin, a hunting lodge, or a fishing hut can directly remedy the situation. I suggest starting with a fishing hut. Of course, always with the fishing. Located near a lake. Okay, not professionals. Oh, I can see. So we can assign people to certain jobs and I can switch that around and we have only four settlers left to assign yeah because we have three workers three on water duty and we have 11 that should be five to assign but anyway we need fish so let's build Food fishing hut. Right there. And I am not I am not uh, aware of the costs because this is a tutorial, so What's the clock? Oh, it consumes power. Or if it consumes power, then it, the production time will be shorter. Put a fissure there. Oh, okay, it's covered. I was wondering why you cannot see the water there, but it is covered, so the contaminated rain uh, won't be affecting it. Thank you. 
I wonder if we can improve that. Or even if we can move uh, else on the map. Like, well, I don't know. Maybe it would be, uh, this would be a better place to live, but if these houses are ruined, they might have structural weaknesses, and if we just live uh, in those houses, then they can uh, collapse. Oh, we have to assign two settlers. Okay, I missed that. Good work. We've now taken care of our basic supply via food and water. Make sure that you have enough food and water on hand at all times, especially if you want to upgrade your settlement. A population that grows too fast can quickly unbalance your food and water supply, bringing major difficulties for you if you don't watch out. Crops are another excellent way of getting food because they constantly grow as long as the soil is moist enough. Each seed has different yields and growing times. This means that it could take some time until your field is ready to be harvested, in contrast to your fishing hut where production can be right away. Okay, I don't understand this season thing, but oh, oh! We have uh, a weather bar here. No rain. Okay, and I, I wonder if the rain, if we have rain, or how contaminated the rain is, it has any effect on the crops. The way it field. Okay. And, well. doesn't uh, tell us how big of a field we need to do notification homeless settlers okay let's put it here then We cannot do that. Why? I cannot put it anywhere? Or what's the deal? Cultivate field. Place, rotate, and mold. Ah, those are entrances. Okay, I got that right. Okay, so how can I cultivate fields? Okay, let's check the manual real quick. Okay, I managed to do it. I don't know how. But I freaking managed to do it. Maybe... I don't know. Maybe it was too small, but then... Okay. I just don't get it. And we need a farmer. And... We need to choose a seed. 
How do we do that? Next seed. Choose seed. Let's do some cabbage. Yeah, this seasons is like like days. Okay, we haven't choose it. How do we choose it? Looks good. Remember that we need the widest variety of food sources to stay healthy. You should also plan ahead for drought periods that might come when it's not going to rain. Stock up on food and adapt your production to avoid bottlenecks. I'll show you a few more strategies later on. Oh, that's an interesting uh, mechanics there. If we have to have a variety of foods. At the beginning, we don't have much scrap, wood, or other resources. We could build a production building, but to obtain resources as fast as possible, it's best that we start gathering right away. Assign a gather all resources task. All the settlers who haven't been assigned any profession by you are going to accept these kinds of tasks. In addition, settlers distribute resources within your settlement. Okay. It's better good task. Oh, these are buildings and tasks. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Now let's gather wood there and gather scrap or scrap there. Yeah, and I have to assign, or I don't know, because it said they will do it uh, automatically. This is also nice uh, mechanic. I like it. Where did the thingy go? Okay, here it is. Okay, I would like to see the consumption rate. Is there any statistics? Yeah. Averages consumed. Okay, I guess activated carbon masks. Wow. Okay, I think this won't be the easiest game. Oh, two children has grown up. Christopher, how are you doing Christopher today? I see everybody is wearing a mask. Should I worry about that? Since we now own plenty of resources, we can start to build a real production building. Then you don't have to always make efforts by hand that collecting is taking place. Production buildings are not only easier to manage, they are also distinctly more effective than simple tasks. Don't place production buildings too far away from your settlement. You'll be able to change their working area at any time later on. 
Okay. Right on. The best thing for us to do now is to build a forester's lodge to automate our supply of wood and make it more effective at the same time. Foresters are not only able to chop down trees, they reforest areas with trees as well. That's good. Sources. Okay, let's spin them around and put them here. Oh, we have different kind of protections. Okay. Ah, there's the uh, materials that are missing. Good job. You might want to change this building's working area later on to tell your workers where they should get their wood from. Ah, and for your information, if you want, you can also tell your forester's lodge that they only ought to attend to reforesting an area in order to create a lush green forest which generations to come can use very good now we ought to take care of collecting scrap scrap is one of the most valuable resources because the quantities present are limited and we can recover other resources from scrap unlike the task we just had the scrap yard allows larger quantities of existing scrap to be dismantled than with ruins or wrecks Okay, what's the deal with this? I think we can remove that. Okay, let's pause the game. Change work field, demolish. Okay. And this is the change work field. Okay, I think we should change it. there okay and now we need the scrap thingy scrap catcher okay we are putting this here Okay, this game is uh, looks interesting. I'm liking it so far. It has. Uh... Whoa! Don't eat the cabbage. It's not for you to eat. I think we should be at a hunting lodge.
I don't get... Oh, okay, okay. We can cancel the autosave. I don't know why it was the timer there, but I, I just missed the buttons. Great. You can change the working area for the scrapyard, too. We can recycle scrap into four additional resources. Cloth, metal, plastic, and electronics. We'll do that shortly, but for now we ought to take care of your settlers' needs first. I bet they need houses. Our people want a place to sleep and yep. live. Cabins fulfill their need for safety and privacy, and increase the confidence of their inhabitants. In other words, building cabins increases their willingness to start families and <laughs> reproduce, if you know what I mean. Okay, let's move this here. And we need eight cabin. Wow. Okay. Okay, shift is working. We're making a little town square here. That's that's eight, right? Yeah, I can count. What's the deal with here? It's almost the production limit is high. So what's the deal with that icon there? Is it almost completely? Yeah, it's almost completely full. Okay. Can we increase the uh, capacity of it? Well, the man did say we have to store water, so we're building that. I wonder if we can upgrade these buildings. Is there any priority to set? Okay. And I put a priority on this. Okay, we have a, a draw coming. That's why we needed this. Okay. Now the water guys can uh, hopefully fill this uh, up. Yeah, they're moving right there. Still, it would be nice to see just a number at each season how much uh, food uh, and water we consume. Besides cabins, you can also provide sturdy houses and shelters as housing. Sturdy houses withstand sandstorms better and have an increased storage capacity to boot. Children living in houses gradually fill up the house's stockpiles. Settlers do not reproduce in a shelter because they lack privacy. Let's return from our excursion into housing and refocus on scrap. With the help of a recycler or refinery, scrap can be sorted into four different resources. A recycler always takes scrap apart, one resource at a time, while a refinery automatically produces all four resources. To start off, you should build a recycler and produce cloth. 
Okay, let's do the recycler. Put it right next to it. And building things, we need scrap, so we cannot recycle everything. And the guy said that scrap is limited, so we have what we have. And that's all. Unless we can trade, but uh, the map is pretty big. Okay, it's taking the cabbage. Oh, we ha I was a bit lost. And we can switch here like this. Okay. And this helps. Yes, this helps. So the ground is changing, how moist it is. can see how the ground uh, water level changes. Cool. Oh, we need to produce four cloth. Okay, I was worried we have to produce a hundred. recycler to produce a different resource at a time. It's important that you focus on the resources you really need, at least in the beginning. Cloth and metal look like good options if you want to equip us with protective clothing and tools. Happy settlers are industrious settlers. That's why we ought to look after our people and protect them against the surroundings and dangers, like radiation. So, let's start by transforming our newly recovered cloth into protective clothing. A tailor will be able to help us with that. Okay, so that's what the tailor is doing. Oh, we can check radiated areas. Oh, and that's the protective gear, just some clothes. Okay, and that's the construction time. All right. Let's slow down a bit. What's this? Coal. I see for the for the mast, it, the carbon filter. We need uh, coal for that. But for the radiation suit, I don't know. Uh, 
let's produce the next card. Okay, it didn't have cloth. Okay. We categorize environmental radiation into four levels. No radiation, low level, medium level, and high level radiation. The radiation changes constantly and is influenced by weather and contaminated rain. Protective clothing helps to protect us against this kind of radiation, but it takes a while before it's produced. And production relies on a steady flow of incoming resources. Try to establish production chains at an early stage and start to stockpile goods so that some are always on hand. The tools we brought along from the end zone are slowly but surely running out. So now, let's focus on manufacturing new tools. The tools will help us to work effectively. We'll need metal for that, so we'll prepare for production by building another recycler, which we'll commission to recover metal from scrap. After that, we'll need a workshop to enable the manufacturing of brand new tools. Okay, the next recycler goes there, and I think the workshop will be there. Oh, we can set before it built. That's great. Oh, this is the draw. Okay. We don't have the course, but uh, we don't need fishers. Oh, we have a lot of children. Okay, and we need to produce... Metal tools. Oh, okay. Metal tools, not scrap tools. And we can see when they will become adult. Great. And I think we need more housing. about you do some plastic I want to experiment with the housing with our lovely new tools we are now prepared to work effectively 
Should you ever run out of metal, keep in mind that you can also instruct your workshop to manufacture tools from scrap instead of metal. Though they won't be quite as effective, it's still better than being forced to work with bare hands. Down in the end zone, we had sufficient time and resources to educate ourselves properly, but our children don't have this luxury. We ought to build a school and pass on what we've learned. As a result, they will be able to survive and work better and more effectively. Okay, we need a school. Now I got some kind of uh, Caesar 3 vibes. Campfire. Okay, boost their confidence. Or oh, we can do pubs. I have to experiment with the layout of the settlements as well. Oh, we have to choose productivity, handling tools, handling clothing, veg. All right. And we need someone there. Perfect. Besides the fact that educated children work more effectively, We'll also teach them to be more careful with their protective clothing and tools. This, in turn, leads to them staying intact longer, and we can serve valuable resources. Now that our population is starting to grow, we ought to again turn our attention to the topic of food production. We're already accumulating fish and tilling our fields. A gatherer's cabin will now enable us to gather mushrooms and berries from the forest nearby. That's why we might want to plant a forest. Okay. Let's back to cloth. Oh, must be unlocked through research. Okay. So that's a thing as well. if the berries and mushrooms will be reproduced. I hope so. Very good. As you can see, the gatherer's cabin is an effective possibility to get food quickly. But watch out. 
After a drought, it's going to take some time before the plants have regrown. As is the case with most buildings, here too, you can relocate the working area at any time. Although we are sufficiently supplied at the moment, our survival depends on diligent planning. If we can lay out a plan for an orchard, then we can start to plant fruit or nut trees that we can harvest after a few seasons. Okay, let's do that. We are doing it here and... Okay, so... The thing is, I have to make it big enough. And only if I... Okay, so I think... The thing here that we have uh, six by six. We have to do uh, at least uh, that big, but we can expand that a little bit. And, oh, choose a seed. Oh, we have only plum. Okay. The orchard has been laid out, and the trees are already beginning to grow. Similar to crops for farming, trees need some time until they are fully grown. But once they have grown, they can be harvested again and again until they have to be newly planted. Our gatherer's cabin gathers food from the surrounding forests. However, there are any number of other plants there which we can use as well. These plants can be gathered by an herbal hut. The herbs gathered there can be consumed by settlers to replenish their health. Okay. Okay. Okay, this, this is a Caesar uh, 3 kind of thing that the attractiveness. There's a dwelling surrounding contributes to the contents of its inhabitants. It is influenced by the attractiveness of the building in the vicinity. Yeah. So we should keep uh, uh, buildings away, production buildings away from uh, cabins. Okay. Now, uh, herbal hut. Okay, let's put the herbal hut there. Or I can put it here, why not? Because they gathering a different resources from this forest. I would say so far this is this is much easier than Frostpunk, but it has uh, much more resources to think about. So it can be more complex later, and of course this is the tutorial. We can equally utilize the gathered herbs to convert them into medicine later on. It might happen that an illness breaks out in our settlement from time to time and spreads among our settlers. That's why we always ought to have enough herbs on hand. Radiation is the main reason why the health status of our settlement can decrease. Although our settlers already use protective clothing to shield themselves against environmental radiation, it might occur that our sources of water become contaminated. We should start to filter our water to prevent this from happening. We will need a great deal of charcoal to accomplish this. The charcoal kiln will burn wood to produce charcoal. 
No, we need a mine. We need a charcoal mine. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Putting a charcoal in front of the houses. That would uh, greatly <laughs> improve the, uh, the attractiveness of the area. It would be so good if we could see the attractiveness or the effect of the attractiveness of a building. But we couldn't see it in Caesar 3, so... Hmm, reserve. Oh, I think the reserve is when you need to do with something in that resource and it is reserved so nobody else uh, can take it but we have infinite wood because we can replant them that means we have infinite uh, charcoal We have plenty of scrap left. Great. We can use the charcoal in conjunction with a filtration system to purify our water. Unfortunately, our cistern is not able to do this. Only the water tower has the necessary equipment for this capability. It would be a disgrace if we had to demolish our trusted cistern just to erect a water tower in its place. What we ought to do instead is upgrade the cistern itself. Okay, we can the water upgrade tower stuff. Can store much more water and provides workplaces for a lot more water carriers than our old cistern. Okay, let's do it. So how do we do that? Oh, there's an upgrade button there. I'm not sure about that, that power consumption. I don't see anything related to that. Upgrade water. Power. Oh, and we need coal. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm relieved. So we just need coal to upgrade it, and I hopefully... Well, it can't consume coal. Okay, something is up here. Okay, we ran out of cloth. Are we running out of scrap? No. Okay, are we upgrading this or what? Ah, okay, I can see the upgrade process there. Oh, we have some statistics here. Okay. Oh, we have the water tower. I did not notice that. And 
We need another recycler. We need to recycle plastic. Okay. Don't auto save. We don't really need that for the tutorial. Okay, and this is just the basic stuff. It's pretty long for that. Come on, build it. Okay. And... Our new water tower is up and ready for action. Good work. Filtering the water is an important next step because clean drinking water is a key mainstay of any stable society. Oh, there's the filtration. Okay. Let's begin with filtering our water. To save on charcoal, we ought to ensure that at least a little bit of water, not contaminated by radiation, is being stored in our water tower. Water gained from a well is never contaminated by radiation, so it suggests itself for that purpose. Then we can use the remaining charcoal to produce better protective clothing. Well, as with the well, it's never contaminated by radiation. <laughs> okay, it works in the game. But let's build a well and this filtration. can activate it okay let's keep that inactive and just do okay let's put the well here that's how fantasy towns works there's a well there's the housings and they are the main buildings Rainwater collector. Electric water pump. Logistics. Trading post. Hmm, interesting. Expedition station. There will be stuff here. I think the gameplay will be deep here, and I like that. Oh, we have to activate the filter. Okay. Each material should produce advanced carbon masks. Okay. Cloth production is not satisfying. Why? What's the hold up with this? Needs cloth. Okay, but. Oh, we don't have cloth. Now we have two. Okay, but it's working now. All right. I think we need... Oh, we have full workforce. Alright. I guess they are assigning themselves. No, we could use another tailor. Not uh, a tailor. Uh... Uh, recycler. Oh, but this is just 
one. Okay. Oh, and we can... Okay, so we can choose what to use. Maybe we want to produce uh, radiation masks and using only scarves until the radiation situation becomes worse and we need the masks. Okay, why don't you produce? Continuously taking steps towards being better and better equipped to be able to survive in this hostile environment. Filtered water is a precious asset. And later on, we can even use it to irrigate our fields. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Not only our water can become a hazard for our settlers due to radiation, our food can too. We ought to erect a decontamination post to prevent settlers from eating meals that are contaminated with radiation. Okay. We see that a minute ago. Oh, we can build uh, decorations. Ah, so that's how we do it. Okay, water, food. We see the document. Document. Uh, okay, I can't pronounce that word, but we see that. Uh, that. Okay, I think I, I do one or two more tasks and this the tutorial is not over. Then we then I end this first video here. I don't want to make it too long. supply all buildings that stockpile food and are located in its working area in order to purify the food that has been affected by radiation. It's true. We should never forget that even when we optimally prepare and protect ourselves, we're still going to lose friends and members of our family time and again. We're going to mourn them come what may. But if we're able to bury them in a cemetery, then we'll get over the pain and let them rest in peace. Okay, we need a cemetery. Not at the resources tab, it's not Frostpunk. Whoa, that's uh, a big one. Let's put it a little bit away from 
the main area. Oh, they are clearing the forest uh, there. I wonder if they... If we can get that resource. Or, or is it just the foresters there? us to quickly get a hold on ourselves and focus on the tasks that lie ahead. It's not a pleasant thought, but that's the way things are. At the very least, we're pioneers, aren't we? Maybe we ought to distract ourselves to lighten up the mood. We can erect a number of buildings to increase confidence in our settlement, including, for example, a campfire or a pub. In this situation, however, our best option would probably be to upgrade our town center. Settlers can visit the new town center, and by doing so, increase their confidence for a while. Okay, I guess this is the town center, yeah, and we can upgrade that. Can we turn it to a building or it will be just a bigger bus? Oh, we need wood for that. gives us more storage space. At the same time, it functions just like a campfire, too. Settlers can visit the new town center, and by doing so, increase their confidence for a while. Now that we have made efforts to ensure the spiritual well-being of our settlers, we ought to attend to their physical health as well. Our settlers can get sick from time to time. Settlers who have become infected with a disease can die from it if they're not treated. Settlers will go to a medical facility to have themselves treated and will be admitted there, provided that beds are still available. We ought to ensure our settlers' medical health care. Okay, we will do that in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I am certainly enjoying this uh, uh, little city builder game. It's somewhere between, uh, for me, like... Post Frostpunk uh, meets uh, Caesar 3. Uh, I'm curious if you have played this game. Uh, would you play it based on what you see here? And, and I see you in the next one. Bye.